There is a new Peugeot electric hatchback coming out in 2023 with over 250 miles of range. And apparently it's going to be quite affordable as well. Got to say, I'm a little bit excited. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to all your new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. Now the Peugeot 308, even though it's an ICE vehicle, the original Peugeot 308 I'm talking about, I quite liked it. I liked the design of it. I like the fact that it's actually got a massive boot. For example, the boot size in a Corolla is around about 200, a Toyota Corolla is around about 280 liters. Now the boot size in the 308 is 420. It's actually a pretty good size vehicle. And now the great news is that as Ben O'Hare from Inside of his reports, it's coming in an electric version next year. Now Peugeot will launch a fully electric version of the 308 available as both a hatchback and a wagon or an estate as you guys call them in Europe. The wagon version would be awesome actually because that thing is quite a big car. So it could be quite affordable as well. So I've got to say, it kind of excites me. Now, apparently this thing will have better efficiency and more power than the smaller E208, which is the electric version of the 208 smaller hatchback that's currently on sale in Europe. Now, like the rest of Peugeot's EVs, the E308 will be based off a retrofitted ICE platform and it will therefore have its heat pump, onboard charger and motor all underneath the bonnet, meaning it won't have a front trunk. The E308 will also be only available in front wheel drive guys. So yeah, this is a bit of a disappointment to hear that this is what Stellantis are doing. They didn't put the effort and time into manufacturing this as a ground up EV, so they're retrofitting an ICE vehicle. Generally, this does lead to some pretty significant compromises, things like having a transmission tunnel inside the car when there's no transmission, etc., etc. You get my point, right? Now, power will come from a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's usable power with a total power output of 154 bhp. Now, on the plus side, the E308 will reportedly only weigh around 1,600 kilos, although that's still not that light. That's 3,527 pounds. So it shouldn't be too slow for an EV with not a whole lot of power. Now, range will be apparently just over 250 miles thanks to the E308's relatively low weight. But realistically, I don't think that's a real world 250 miles. Real world might be more EPA range of say 200 miles. Now, what is the price? Unfortunately, I don't know that yet. Apparently the pricing will be revealed closer to release date so probably more like the end of this year, they're going to release the price. But my guess would be the price will be around about forty-five to 50000 US dollars. Now, the E308 will be sold alongside its petrol, diesel, and FEV plug-in hybrid versions that are currently on the market. And production will begin in the middle of 2023. Now, I've got to say, I think... By the middle of 2023, we're going to see a number of Chinese imports in the market in Europe, which will be cheaper than this and have longer range than this. One example of a very similar car is the BYD Dolphin, the EA1. I'll put some links in the description below to that car. The Dolphin costs around about, for the base model, around about $15,000 in China. And the top spec model is around about $22,000 US dollars as well. And it has a similar size. It's got a 45 kilowatt hour battery pack. So I think we'll find you'll find that realistically by the middle of next year, there's going to be some potentially better, more affordable options in Europe, which you could consider as well. Now, as for those of you that don't know, Peugeot is actually now part of the Stellantis group. And Stellantis recently have made some interesting, sensational, I would say very disappointing comments about electric cars. They claim that it costs them twice as much to build an electric car as it does a gas powered car, even though, you know, obviously many companies are saying now the prices have gone down a lot. For example, BYD is able to manufacture an electric car on the same cost parity as their ICE vehicles. So that is a bit disappointing. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about the Stellantis CEO making some pretty outrageous comments about electric cars and saying that, you know, consumers don't want electric cars. It's only politicians that are forcing them on us and you know, other kind of nonsense like that. 
Now, my honest opinion on this car after reading all of the detail is that a 50 kilowatt hour battery and a legacy ICE retrofitted vehicle in 2023, in other words, taking a gas powered vehicle and just turning it into a battery car is not really ideal. And that 250 mile range is definitely gonna be WLTP. What does that mean? Probably approximately 200 miles on the EPA cycle, which is less range than a 2017 Chevy Bolt. In other words, this is probably not gonna be the solution you're after. Regardless of what country you're in, there will be better choices available, unfortunately. Stellantis just hasn't really done the work here to produce a vehicle which is gonna be, you know, in that level where you really wanna consider buying one. That said, if you can buy the station wagon version for say $2,000 more, that definitely could be a serious option to consider because there's not a lot of station wagon versions of electric cars available right now. And they are so much more practical than those hatchbacks. So if you're in the market for one of those, definitely something worth considering. Now let me know in the comment section below. Will you consider one of these? What kind of electric car are you after? Have you bought one? Let me know. Have a great day and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.